Now that's a beautiful song, beautifully sung and played. It is Brian May and Kerry Ellis. The Candlelight Concerts gigs are coming to the Buxton Opera House on February the 19th, and I'm very pleased to say the pair of them join me on the programme this afternoon. How are you? We do indeed, Andy. We're good. We're good, thank you. What's it like when you hear that coming out of a radio rather than just sitting on stage playing it? <laughs> it's nice. really nice. Actually, oh, it's, it's the first time today. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and the first time for a while, is because that's the Montreux performance isn't it? That's, that's from the jazz festival, mm. I think. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's what so, you sent me anyway. So you yeah, know. <laughs> I, I, I've never heard that on the radio, in fact. Yeah, we've heard the Brixton version. No, not Brixton. Where did we do the, the, the British tour version? We, we did a CD of the British tour, and then we did the, the DVD of, uh, of Montreux. So this is the first. And that's out when? When is the... The, the DVD's out end of March, I think. Mm, I, I love so. that. I'm just going to sit back and they can just do all their yeah. own promotion. The thing about it, <laughs> you, coming, you coming to Buxton, though, is this is sort of where these concerts started, isn't it, when you're coming back to Absolutely. Buxton? This is the reason we're doing the tour, really, because the Buxton date came up and we thought, oh, yes, it'd be nice to do a little bit more because we'd, mm. we've, we've done this quite a bit in Europe and in, in Britain. But, yeah, Buxton, we thought, yeah, we'll do that and then g it'll give us an excuse to go out there and do some more dates <laughs> around the country. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> uh, now, the last time we spoke was when you were coming for that first tour. Time. So, mm. has it changed? The dynamics of the pair of you changed because the last time Kerry was doing all the talking, but it seems, Brian, <laughs> that you're pushing yourself <laughs> forward. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kerry's quite Come. often a woman of a few words, actually. <laughs> but once she gets going, yeah. It varies. It's very variable, which I think is the nicest thing about what we do. You know, the songs vary and what we say varies a lot, you know, we, depending on what kind of stories we feel we want to tell. Um, and we react to the audience, I guess. We try and sort of get a feel for what they what they're into. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Sometimes you'll get astronomy, sometimes you'll get you <laughs> queens, who knows what you Well, you'll we'll get. get to astronomy in just a while, but, but Kerry, I mean, what, what's it like? Because, I mean, the last time we spoke was about the first time that you met Brian and We Will Rock You and all of those mm. sort of things. But now, you know, walking out on stage and doing beautiful songs like that, which is an old Kansas song, isn't it? It's a yeah. Kansas song, yeah. Mm. How, do you, how do you find those songs and, and, and how do you work to get all of these shows on? It's a process of experimentation, isn't it? Really? Yeah. yeah, we just try things. I mean, a lot of the times I bring things to the table because I've had all sorts of influences for a very long time, being a very old person. <laughs> you know, and some of it's news to carry. And she goes, oh, I haven't had you know, and some of it isn't. I mean, strangely enough, just before the news of poor um, Phil Everly came mm. along, we were working on an Everly Brothers song. Mm. You know, and it's something mm. that I brought to the table because I loved them when I was a kid. They're such a big part of my inspiration and development as a kid you know so we were starting to do this Everly Brothers song and then suddenly we heard the news so there's a there's a very particular reason to be doing that on the next part of this tour so we'll be doing that in Buxton. So when you mention things then Brian and Kerry goes I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well Kerry knows a lot of stuff it's that doesn't rare. often happen. Yeah, no, I might not know the, the details but I know a lot of a lot of tunes and a lot of melodies but I won't perhaps know you know the detail and who it is and you know, when it's from. Kerry, do you, mm, I was say, do, you know, do you use your voice, Kerry, in a different way to when you're doing musical theatre or doing, doing the big concert or like War of the Worlds and things that you've been involved with? Is it, does it come from a different place? Well, I mean, it all does come from the same place, but I think the, the joy of doing what I do with Brian is that I can be expressive and be very free. I think when you're part of a musical or part of a specific concert, you know, you kind of working in, in a limit of boundaries because you're playing a character and, and you're working to a score that's quite specific. Whereas when I do songs with Brian, I can do exactly what I want and be very open and free and, and change it every night, which is, again, a real novelty because you can't do that in a, in a musical. How many people do you have around you as well? Is it just yourself, Brian, and you, Kerry, or do, or do you have a bit of a band with you as well? We have a keyboard player, you know, he, he does occasional things. Sometimes he's working and sometimes he's not <laughs> uh, in, the, in the course of the set. Uh, Jeff Leach, actually, he's an amazing, he's a wonderful yeah. player. I don't want to, you know, understate what he is. He's it's incredible. an entire orchestra on his own. <laughs> he really is incredible, yeah. So he's there as a sort of backdrop if we want it. But that's all, you know, there's no backing tracks or, and there's no, there's no band. There's no drums, which is really good. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it, Brian, we're talking about age, you know, yeah, is, it, is it because they're a bit loud? 
Is, is that oh, what you say? <laughs> it's a funny thing. No, no, I love it. It all gets loud. <laughs> we do get loud, strangely enough. But the funny thing is, we did one date at the end of the last of it, didn't we, in Switzerland? Yeah. And they talked us into doing it with a band because it was a guitar festival. So I went, okay, we'll try it. And then we, we got to the sound check, and there's suddenly all this clatter and banging. <laughs> and we <laughs> kind of couldn't stand it, really. <laughs> so, you know, because we're used to having such control over our mm. environment. That's the great thing. Mm. It's just the two of us and, and Jeff. And. And um, you can hear a pin drop in the quiet bits. You know, it's very mm. controlled. And we can get loud and rowdy if we want. But, you know, the drum thing is, you know, if you have a drummer in a situation like that, the, you're always getting this kind of competition in a sense. You know, the, the vocalist is always competing with the, the drums. And sometimes that can get in the way, you know. So, you know, Kerry's voice is incredibly um, well focused in, in what we do, as you've seen. And, and have you got a musical shorthand between the pair of you now? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, we seem to sort of. Well, I don't know. It's an interesting question. It is. I think, especially when we're performing together, there is a, a familiarity there that I kind of know if Brian's going to do something, and I think vice versa. I think we have. It, it, because there is just the two of us and sometimes mm. Jeff, you know, you do have, you listen to everything and every breath is taken into consideration. So you're very aware of what each other is doing. So, mm. yeah, I guess I guess there is. And yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm not looking at Kerry most of the time because I'm looking at what I'm doing. You know, but out of the corner of my eye, I'm getting her body language and I can pick up if she's changing tempo or if she's putting extra bits of expression in. So, yeah, I think we are connected without... So so there's there's room for surprise then. It, it, that's what keeps things <laughs> yes, fresh, isn't it? <laughs> a lot of surprises, yeah. <laughs> a lot of surprises, yeah. <laughs> Has he got you involved with astronomy yet, though, Kerry, or not? <laughs> oh, not quite. I mean, I'm involved in some of the things, you know, that I, I support the, the animal charities that Brian works with, but not quite the stars yet. We're not quite there. <laughs> you see, the, the, which is my subtle way of getting onto stereoscopy as well, ah, Brian. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the, now, you are, and looking at your website, I mean, you are involved in many different things, but you're quite proud of this. Mm. Just explain what stereoscopy is. <laughs> well, it's 3D. That's the thing, you know. So anyone who's seen, who's seen Avatar doesn't need any explanation, which is a great thing. Um, but my interest goes back to the 18... 18- 50s not that i was alive then although you might think so <laughs> i'm <laughs> saying nothing <laughs> i know the 1850s yeah when everything that that stereoscopy and 3d is was done in the 1850s and 60s because it was discovered then at the same time as photography was discovered or invented if you like mm. so that's my interest the history of it and it's incredible the stuff you can unearth it's like archaeology really so the recent book which we put out was on diablerie which is little devilments the devilments which were created in the 1860s in france and they're colossal it's just a whole universe of skeletons and satan and his minions which has never been seen in the 21st century in glorious 3d you see this is the bit where i put my feet up i think you, you, educational this is i could sit there and hear and listen to you talking about this for ages so what about <laughs> kerry what about he needs his own show doesn't he? he needs a little radio show it was a subtle way of doing it really <laughs> but but what about yourself what, what what hobbies have you got away from the stage then kerry Hobbies. Well, I'm a new mum, so I'm, I've got a 12-week son that uh, is keeping me very busy at the moment. Mm. So uh, that's kind of, I'm balancing, you know, being a mum and going on tour mm. is, is, is keeping me up all hours. <laughs> but, but you can get him to write you a lullaby, can't you? I could. I could. Maybe I'll get him to do it on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> How many dates are you doing on the tour, though? We've, we've talked about Buxton, but is it a big tour for the pair of you? It's a small tour. Yeah, it's kind of an extension, it? really, of, of our last one. We went out um, and did two weeks in the UK and two weeks in Europe mm. uh, not that long ago. And this is just an extra seven dates, I think it is. Mm. So uh, it's the places we didn't go. And uh, it's an excuse for us to do it again because we really enjoyed it. Yeah, well, we have a few dates other places, too. So we're going to Moscow and to Minsk. And Riga, so that's going to be pretty interesting. Because normally when we talk about tours, we talk about up and down the country, and then you start mentioning countries or <laughs> places. <laughs> that's what I like—a tour that takes you around the world. It uh, does. <laughs> We're quite portable. <laughs> yeah. So are we going to get? You've, you've talked about DVDs coming out, but are we going to get more albums from the pair of you? Do you want to go into a studio and, and replicate what you do on stage in a studio? Yeah. Well, we have done. I mean, this tour is on an album. Um, acoustic by candlelight and yeah we're constantly working but it's just finding the time we do snatch moments here and there so yeah there's plenty mm. more to do and mm. brian if you were to look back at that youngster coming into this industry all those years ago i want to know what advice you'd give him would you do things exactly the same or would you change things 
Oh, me? Ooh, that's a big question. I don't think we could have done things any different. We just dedicated ourselves to it, and we were very dedicated, and we still have that sort of work ethic, I suppose. Um, what would we have done different? I think we wouldn't have signed up with our, that first management company because mm. that was kind of a disaster. But then again, you're young, you have no power, you don't know what you're doing. Somebody comes along and offers you a deal, so you, you, you go for it. But, you know, that seriously wounded us for a long time. And it still does. We still pay those guys. So, uh, you know, it's, it's okay. But probably that I would have preferred not to do. It's been fantastic talking to the pair of you. Uh, congratulations on your news as well, Brian, about getting the clear from you. You had some medical Oh, things. yeah. Yes, I feel like a big weight's been lifted off me. Yeah, you get, to you get told these things. You know, you may have this. Oh, really? <laughs> but, you know, after a load of tests, yeah, I seem to be clear. We still don't know quite what it is that's bothering me, but that's, you know, I'm feeling that I'm cleared of, of the, the, not, the really bad things, you know, so, yeah. Amazing Thank stuff. You. I'm going to finish on another record a tune <laughs> from the pair of you. Uh, you, can, you can introduce it, Kerry. It's the Kissing Me song. Oh, yay! Well, this is uh, a great song that actually evolved from our last tour, and it's called The Kissing Me Song. <laughs> Kerry Ellis and Brian May together with a bit of a band on that one, the Kissing Me song. If you want to see them, they're in books, and I don't think there's going to be that many tickets left. Uh, but the 19th of February uh, for the Candlelight Concert gig there in Buxton.